I don't even know where to begin. I, I just, I just don't. I, oh. How, just how, how can you start a season so unfucking prepared? Is this pre season? Is this pre season? Like, seriously, is this pre season? Because that's what it looked like. I don't even know what to say. I, I just don't. Nobody looked any good. Uh, but, you know, Van der Beek coming on to, uh, 13 minutes after, scoring. You know, uh, unbelievable. You know, uh, what difference a signing can do. It's so depressing seeing clubs like Chelsea, like uh, Spurs, Liverpool, all signing their marquee players, you know, uh, blah, blah, blah. Even fucking Arsenal look better prepared than us. They haven't had a good team since 2008, for fuck's sake, man. <sighs> It's just ridiculous. Not one player performed well today. Obviously, Bar Van der Beek, who did score when he came on. But in terms of starters, they all looked shite, man. Like, Pogba gave, the way, gave away the ball about 28 times, then got subbed off for Van der Beek. Bruno Fernandes wasn't too much better today, which is, you know, a shame, given how good he was last season. The forward three had about two touches combined. <sighs> Fuck's sake, man. And as for Victor Lindelof, oh my God, man. He was at fault for all three fucking goals. I feel sorry for him for the second one. I mean, how? How is that, first of all, a penalty? Yes, there's this banter about Manchester United getting 400 penalties a game. Yeah, fair enough, whatever. But how? How can he do anything about that? The ball struck him from a yard away on his arm. He's not, like... He's jumping. It's involuntary. It's not handball. Regardless, the penalty's given. Fine. Fine. Okay. Great save from David De Gea. What happens? Two inches off the line. Two inches off the line and they retake it. But they're allowed to change the fucking penalty taker? Are you having a laugh? What kind of shit is that, man? Fuck's sake. <sighs> so 2-0 down and then, of course, Van der Beek scores. And then, you know, you're thinking, yes, this will be the catalyst. This will be that. No, Lindelof, you know, fuck it, Palace lads. I might as well sign for you. I'm not even good enough to play for you. Here's the fucking third goal. Zaha, bang, 3-1. <sighs> Honestly, I'm so, so pissed off. I mean, y you can obviously tell. But uh, I just don't know. I just don't know. It's so annoying because you get Liverpool signing world-class players like Thiago, who we could have had. We could have had no, no qualms about it. We pay the money before they do. He joins us. Of course, it's not a priority position. So, you know, if we didn't sign Thiago and we'd got our other targets, I wouldn't be as bothered if we'd have got Sancho at the end of July. If we'd have got a left back, a centre back. You know, I wouldn't be as bothered, but we haven't. We've got Van der Beek and I feel sorry for him because he's the only signing and he scored today. He's looked pretty good. And yet... Yeah, it's still going to be a shite window if that's all we get because we need a lot more than him. A central midfielder, whatever it was, calm, centre mid, possibly CDM's a little bit different, but they weren't priority signings this season. It's really nice to have more depth there. Of course it is, but we need a centre back, we need a left back, and we need a right wing. <sighs> you know, I just hope Mengi, I hope, to, uh, it, you know, we're not going to sign a centre back. We might get Tellers, but we're, we're balking at the £17 million pound fee uh, in terms of left-back. We're not going to get Sancho because we're not going to pay the £108 million. And yes, it's a ludicrous amount. But the term generational is thrown around a lot. But Sancho is generational. He really is. He's 20 years old. And just the stuff he does for Dortmund, for England, prior to the last two friendlies, which were just garbage anyway because the shitty midfield that Southgate put on. But no. You can see the talent. So you're paying for at least a decade. And, you know, you can get resale value because he's only 20. So 108 million, yes, prior COVID is ridiculous. But, I mean, look at what Chelsea are spending. They've spent 200 million this window because they want to do something. Liverpool apparently had, like, 20 pence in their fucking budget. Yet they're spending 20 million on Thiago, then 43 million on uh, Diego Jota. And then you've got uh, Spurs who... Of the, right... The, the Regulon deal, I completely agree with the club with, okay? No no chance should we be taking a fucking buyback clause, no matter what. So that, fair enough, I agree. Bale is a decent signing for Spurs as well. I didn't want him. I'm not on about that. I'm on about Sancho. 
primarily Sancho, and then centre back and left back. We've had 53 days in the transfer market. What have we done? We've shipped out Alexis Sanchez and signed Donny van der Beek. That is it, literally. We've got a couple of loans for uh, for James Garner and a couple of other players. But other than that, it's absolutely nothing. We haven't sold Smalling because we're pissing around with about 500,000 with Roma. We haven't sold Jones, bearing in mind he's injured, fair enough. Mata, Lingard, Pereira, all still at the club. Rojo, Lindelof at the minute. Like, he's on the feckin' dartboard at the minute. Um, Dallo doesn't seem to you know, be favoured. We haven't managed to orchestrate a loan or a transfer for him. It's not just the signings going out. It's the, Sorry, the signings coming in, it's the signings going out. And yeah, today was shambolic. It really was. It looked like a pre-season. We didn't have any fitness. We didn't have anything today. It just, it, it wasn't good enough, but I mean, oh, how can you start a season like this? I just, and I haven't credited Palace at all because obviously I'm so angry and I'm so frustrated, but Palace did deserve the win today. Take nothing away from them. They deserved it. They they defended brilliantly as a unit. They were lethal on the counter-attack. They could have had a lot more goals. De Gea, he made a mistake in the first 10 minutes, but I think he rectified it with a couple of really good saves. Obviously, he saved the penalty before it was stupidly overturned to retake again. So Palace fully deserved all three points, and that's what's frustrating. I don't think it's Oli's fault. Um, you know, yes, maybe we should have started Van Der Beek. Maybe we should have started Greenwood, etc., etc. We don't know the fitness of other players. Uh, obviously, Matt Itch and Wan Bissaka were... Um, Oh, what do you call it? The fucking lockdown quarantine, like they're quarantined and they've only had a couple of training sessions or whatever. So, you know, it, it's understandable, but it's just the lack of transfer activity that's really, really fucking frustrating. And just the, the lack of preparation for the season, man. <sighs> just, uh, I don't know. I, I just don't know. I'm, I was looking forward to the season so much and it's already, already got a fucking cloud over it. It doesn't help when every other fucking team's won around us. You know, the, the teams that we should be um, competing with. And this should be the season where we uh, compete for the title. I did a graph last month uh, showing the spending, the differences between when we get uh, Champions League and when we don't. And that's became headline news in terms of, uh, you know, stories that have came out recently. Obviously, they didn't see my work. I'm just saying that I, I said this about a month ago and I, I did a, a graph about it. But yeah. We spend significantly less when we have Champions League football in a season compared to when we don't. Uh, there's only been one season in the last seven since Fergie retired where we've you know, spent the same amount that we do when we miss out on Champions League when we have it. And it seems as though that's going to be the same fucking story today. With, within a week, we really need to be having a couple of other signings because I think we've got Spurs next, don't we? I, I know we've got Luton in the Cup. Um, but I, I mean next Premier League game I think it's Spurs if I'm wrong I apologise but I think um, it's Spurs next week and yeah if Mourinho gets one up on us it's just gonna it's just gonna put such a, a big damp now even more than the 3-1 loss against Palace it's just fucking embarrassing man at home I don't know I don't know. I, I'm just un obviously understandably pissed off, but you know what? I'm going to end this. I don't know what you're going to make of this review, but um, yeah, uh, what a shit start to the Premier League.